Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And today we see about the modulus of a counter. All right, modulus of a counter. This is a useful topic. All right, and we could also say counting to a particular value. Counting to a particular value. How to do that? <coughs> Sorry. So this is our today's topic. Modulus of a counter. Now let us first take an example. Let's say I have a 3-bit up counter. Right? <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Let's say I have a 3-bit up counter. So it counts from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, that is its maximum count, which means it can count from 0 to 7. But what if I need a counter to count from 0 to 5? Hmm? So with the 2 bits, I cannot do that because the 2 bit counter can count till a maximum of 3. And then the 3 bit counts till a maximum of 7. So, how do I count till a maximum of 5? That is what we understand today through this modulus. Now, this modulus we represent by the mod number. By what? By the mod number, which is equal to 2 to the power n. Where n is what? Where n represents the number of bits. Which means that we could say that a 2-bit counter has a mod number 4. Alright? 2-bit counter is also called a mod 4 counter. So we could say that a 2-bit counter is equivalent to what? Is, is called a mod 4 counter. And similarly you can say that a 3-bit counter is a mod what? 2 to the power 3 is 8. So so this is a mod 8 counter. Is that clear? Now if you know this 2 to the power n also denotes the number of states of the counter. So which means the mod number is the same as that of the number of states. Mod number and number of states are one in the same thing. And what are the number of states? So you know number of states is what? State. State is what? Uh, all the counts that a counter is going to do. All the counts that a counter is going to do. For example, for example, you have a 2-bit counter, all right? So 2-bit counter does what? 0, 0 is the first count, 0, 1 is the second, 1, 0 is the third, 1, 1 is the fourth count. So we have seen 2-bit counter is a mod 4 counter because mod 4 represents what? 2 is the power, uh, what 2 represents 4 and 4 is what? These are the counts that it is going to do and these are the 4 counts that it has done. The maximum count that a counter does is 2 to the power n minus 1. Maximum count or that a counter does is 2 to the power n minus 1. As you can see over here, for the 2-bit counter. For 2-bit, the maximum count is what? Is 2 to the power 2 minus 1, which is 4 minus 1, which is 3. And we have 1, 1 in this case, which is 3. So this is the general concept behind this topic, all right? Now we design, all right? So let me take a scenario. To design a mod 6 counter, let's say, we are given a question to design a modulus 6 counter using a modulus 8 counter. So this is, I believe, I've talked previously about in this video, right? I, I gave the example. So modulus 6 states what? This means the number of states are 6. Fine? Number of states are 6 in this case, which means that the maximum count is 5 in this case. 
All right, and about mod 8 counter, so we have the number of states are 8 in this case, which means the maximum count is 2 to the power n minus 1, which is 7. Now, if we don't have, we have either a 2-bit counter or a 3-bit counter. We don't have in between the bits, all right? We either have a 2, either have a 3, because they are whole numbers, all right? So, which means 2-bit counts till 3, and the 3-bit counts till 7. So, how to count till 5? So the 2-bit cannot do that, but we can restrict the 3-bit counter to count till 6 and don't count further. And that is the aim of this video. Alright, so how do you do that? So we also discussed something before that is a preset and the clear inputs and there, here it is when they come into play, the asynchronous inputs. So we have studied that when preset is 0, the output has to be 1 and when the clear is 0 so this would imply the output to be 0 is it like this yes it is so which means this is the set action you are setting the flip-flop when the output is 1 this is called setting of the flip-flop when the output is 0 this is called resetting of the flip-flop set and reset all right so what do we do we we do what we we, we don't want uh, over here we want till five all right and and it can count to seven so so in this case we don't want we don't want the counter to count to six and seven isn't it? Because we want to count till a maximum of 5. So we do what? Well, as soon as 6 is arrived, we provide a clear signal. We reset the counter, which means we reset all the flip-flops, which means what? That we provide clear signal. Clear is resetting it, right? So we provide a clear signal to all flip-flops. Is it fine till here? Alright? So, now uh, let me draw the diagram for it. You know about uh, its diagram. So I'm removing this part. Okay, I hope you're getting it, right? So you, you, how should I know that you're getting it? I, I know it when you write there in the comment section, all right? So this is a 3-bit counter. So we need three flip-flops, right? Let's say we are using T flip-flops. Q, Q complement, T, Q, Q complement, Q, Q complement and T. Alright, if you want to write A, B, C, so you can write them, alright. <clears throat> now, uh, this is an asynchronous counter, which means this is given over here. Alright, and then you have what? This clock is given over here. Fine. Okay, and all the inputs are given a logic 1, which means all the T are given a logic 1. Is it fine? Okay. And an external clock pulse is provided over here, which is in this state. Fine. All right. So what does this do? This counter now counts 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 till 5 it has counted now as soon as 6 arrives and 6 is I believe 1 0 1 right this is 2 to the power 0 is 1 no it's 1 1 0 it's 1 1 0 1 1 0 is 6 2 to the power 0 to the power 1 is 2 to the power 2 is 4 so 4 plus 2 is 6 right so as soon as this 1 1 0 arrives you have to do what? You have to reset the flip-flop. And now let me write over here because I need them. Q, A, B. Sorry, this is A. 
A. This is B. B and B. This is C. C and C. Fine. So you have a look. The QA is the most significant bit, the least significant bit. QA is the least significant bit LSB and this QB no sorry QC QC is the most significant bit MSB is that fine which means over here the zero represents uh, a what QA fine so that the, 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 the clear signal I told you is provided over here this is the clear signal fine all right now what do you have one one zero so you have to provide a zero over here and you have to make this thing a zero so how do we do that we use a NAND gate all right so let me write here we use a NAND gate so let me use it over here all right now this is the NAND gate I'm drawing it opposite well it's not drawn properly but you know that I cannot draw it. so the QA is low so we give it we have to give it a 1 so we give it first to a NOT gate fine this is your QA QB is high and QC is high so over here you have have a look you have a one 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 at the input which means uh, you know look at here this <coughs> sorry this zero is coming QA is a zero right so NAND gate gets is a one QB is a one QC is a one so one 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 NAND together gives you a zero now this zero is what this is you have to provide at the clear signal so we provide the zero at the clear signal and this means now this flip-flop has been resetted and all the outputs of the flip-flops have attained the zero state which means it has achieved its maximum count now, okay now if you if you draw the clock diagram over here okay so I'm removing this now you know it Okay, so let me draw the clock pulse first. All right, so let me mention the falling gauges. This is the falling gauge. This is the falling gauge. This is the falling gauge. This one and this one. Two more, right? okay now have a look this is the clock pulse the clock pulse all right now for QA so QA is let's say assumed to be zero initially this is if QA zero initially for first falling edge arrived so it toggles all right the next falling edge it toggles all right This is the first falling edge, this is the second, this is the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Fine? So, over here. It will toggle till the sixth clock pulse. And after the sixth clock pulse, it will assume the zero state. And why is it? So, I will be telling you. You know it basically but I will be showing it from this diagram all right now QB for QB the QA is acting as the as the what as the clock pulse so these are the falling edges this is the second and this is the third so QB initially assumed to be zero goes like this toggles on the falling edge it stays high till the next falling edge toggles again till the next falling edge toggles again over here now it won't toggle all right so it means that it comes to a zero state again it will stay zero after this pulse fine 
Now the QC, so only this is the falling edge. All right, so QC initially was zero. The first falling edge arrives. It gets high stay. And this is the sixth clock pulse over here. Everything has to get zero after this pulse. All right, now have a look. We had to make a maximum count of 101, which was five, all right? So have a look, the maximum count is what? One, zero, one. QC is the most significant bit, one, zero, one. And after that, we had to reset the flip-flop, which means all of them had to be zeros. So have a look, zero, zero, zero. A flip-flop has been reset, and all the outputs have been brought to zero. So I hope the main idea is clear. All right, now over here, over here, have a look. If you don't want to include the QA signal, you don't include it. You just include the high signal. You give them an AND gate, it will convert them to a zero, and you give them to a reset, to the clear signal, right? You can also give the preset signal a high signal, so it won't uh, get any effect, all right? If the preset signal is given a logic one. Fine. The clear is zero, it will reset. Fine. So that's all about it. That's all about this lecture. See you in the next lecture very soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye.